Good morning. This morning I want to share a verse with you from Exodus chapter 15 verse 13. It says, Thou in thy mercy hast led forth the people which thou hast redeemed, thou hast guided them in thy strength unto thy holy habitation. Now this verse is lifted out of the Song of Moses after they after Israel had crossed the Red Sea um, and, and God had destroyed the armies of Pharaoh and they were now migrating towards the promised land. Obviously, there's going to be some time in that, but this is at the beginning. And <clears throat> excuse me. And this is a verse that talks about how God had led his people to his holy habitation. It was a verse that our founding fathers used frequently. Uh, it was one that they stood on because they believed that God had led them to this land to form a new nation. And today we are under attack as a nation. And this is a two-pronged attack. It's more than that, but it's two basic directions we're seeing this attack right now. And we need to be careful that we pay attention and that we learn. Don't forget where we came from. Let's learn. Let's learn some history. Because what we're hearing today is that our founding fathers were just a bunch of white European supremacist, black-hating slaveholders that were cruel, and everything about the founding of our country was to keep people, keep blacks enslaved. And today you're hearing some things that, uh, in fact, just the other day, uh, I can't remember who it was, a man said that racism, that, that slavery began in America. It, it nowhere nearly began in America. Slave has, slave holding has been from the time of man virtually. There's always a people that try to enslave another people. You can find that all over the world. It's not unique, nor was it new to America. And the people they're now saying, Washington, Jefferson, all these people, they, they hated blacks, they all had slaves, they were cruel taskmasters. And, and there's nothing much farther from truth than those kinds of things. The other side of that now is we're attacking police. All police, systemic racist. <clears throat> And they're out to destroy. This, this is all just about white privilege, white supremacy, yada, yada, yada. So I want to share some things with you. Let's start on the police end. Um, there is no study of any kind, and there have been many done, and many done by Ivy League schools, Princeton, Stanford, all these places. None of them have ever shown a systemic racism in the police departments across the United States. And I have never found it. And before you start telling me, well, you won't understand because you're white and, you know, yada, 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 smack me. So let's just get some things established here really quick. I, for those of you who don't, may not know me, I'm David McAllister. I was born in Broken Arrow, Oklahoma. That would be a southern state. Not very southern, but we are a southern state below the Mesa Dixie line. So I grew up in a southern state. I have experience with the police. You can't read it very well because of the lighting, but that would be my lapel badge, and this would be my lieutenant bar, where I served as a duly sworn deputy of the Washita Parish Sheriff's Office in Louisiana, where I did not find systemic racism, not even in the heart of Louisiana. And let's get another thing established. I am not white. I am not Anglo-Saxon, I am not European, I am not Dutch, I am Jewish, I am a Hebrew. My bloodline is Eastern. So I am not white, and I don't want to hear any more about it. I am a child of God by the grace of Jesus Christ. I am an American by birth, and I'm a Baptist by choice. I love my country, and I understand my country, I understand the history. I understand the mistakes that we have made. And yes, slavery was a mistake, should have never been. So let's put this stuff away and let's look at things for what they really are. There is not a systemic racism in our police departments. Are there police that are bad? Yes. Are there police that are racist? Yes. Just like in every other walk of life where you talk about medicine or hamburger shops, there will always be people who are, who are uneducated as to what real life is and they don't understand the value of humanity. And can I just pause right there and tell you, socialism and communism is based in atheism. Socialist, communist Russia was atheist. The government was atheist. Stalin, Marx, those were all people who believed God did not exist, and that's how this came about. And everywhere you look, where there's socialism or there's communism, there's a dictator. There's a group 
the quote government, they're in charge, everybody else stands in bread lines to, to get what they want while they fare sumptuously. That's just how it ends up. The other end of that was all these cruel people that started our country, and we have to erase all that and start all over. We got to tear down all the monuments, tear down all the statues, tear down everything, tear it all up and start all over. In 1865, in fact, December 18th, 1865, the 13th Amendment, which freed slaves, was ratified. It began as a proclamation, the Emancipation Proclamation of 1863. And to celebrate the ratification, on February 12th of 1865, President Lincoln requested a Presbyterian minister come and speak, preach a sermon in the House of Representatives to a joint session of Congress. There's your little separation of church and state right there. The president had a pastor come in and preach a sermon in the House of Representatives to a joint session. His name uh, was Henry Highland Garnett. And this is what he said. I just want to read this to you and then we're going to get out of here. He said, Augustine, Constantine, Ignatius, Polycarp, Maximus, and the most illustrious lights of the ancient church denounced the sin of slaveholding. Thomas Jefferson said at a period of his life when his judgment was matured and experience was right, this is what he said, there is preparing, I hope, under the auspices of heaven, a way for a total emancipation. The sainted Washington said near the close of his mortal career, as, and when the light of eternity was beaming upon him, it is amongst my first wish, wishes to see some plan adopted by which slavery in this country shall be abolished by law. I know of but one way by which this can be done, and that is by legislative action. And so far as my vote can go, it shall not be wanting. There's that terrible slave owner, Washington, trying to vote to ban slavery. Patrick Henry said, we should transmit to posterity, posterity our abhorrence of slavery. And so thought that Congress. Let the verdict of death, which has been brought uh, in against slavery by Congress, be affirmed and executed by the people. Let the gigantic monster perish. Yes, perish now and perish forever. Let slavery die. It has had a long and fair trial. God himself has pleaded against it. Its death warrant is signed by God and man. Do not commute its sentence. Give it no respite, but let it ignominiously be executed. Honorable senators and representatives, illustrious rulers of this great nation, I cannot refrain this day from invoking upon you in God's name the blessings of millions who were ready to perish, but to whom a new and better life has been opened by your humanity, justice, and patriotism. You have said, let the constitution of the country be so amended that slavery and involuntary servitude will no longer exist in the United States except in punishment for a crime. Surely an act so sublime could not escape divine notice, and doubtless the deed has been recorded in the archives of heaven. Favored men and honored of God as his instruments speedily finish the work which he has given to you, emancipate, franchise, enfranchise, educate and give the blessings of the gospel to every American citizen. That was the bulk, or part of the message that was preached in the halls of our Congress. And by the way, Henry Garnett, who preached this, was the first black pastor to speak in the House of Representatives. Let's get the real history. And remember that despite our failings, this country was founded on God, and we have strived to correct errors, correct mistakes. Don't let a group of God-hating fearmongers ruin our nation or cause us to forget where we started. Cause us to forget the God who brought us here. By His power, by His grace, He brought us here. Let's learn to love all men, even those who fight against us. Just as Jesus said, pray for those that despitefully use you or persecute you. Love them. Pray for them. 
stand for our nation. Don't be afraid to speak the truth in love. And if you don't know the truth, get a book. Get a real history book. This idea that we, we know more now, don't let our history be rewritten. The moment we forget where we came from is the moment we forget where we're going. And we will come apart. God established our nation through godly people. It is the foundation for our law. And we need to honor that. We need to support our police. They are under brutal attack. And in these places, especially these liberal-run places, they're, de they're just devolving into chaos. And it is going to get worse and spill over everywhere else if we don't take a stand, support our, our law enforcement, and stand for God. Christians, no matter how this goes, our duty to God to stand for the truth, to preach His name, to share the gospel, will not change. No matter how toxic it gets or how dangerous it becomes to us, we still have an obligation, so let's speak the truth in love. Stand for Jesus Christ. Don't quit. Be faithful together with your brothers and sisters wherever and whenever you can to gain some strength. But let's stand for God and don't fear what's going on. Understand what is going on and stand for truth. Stand for Jesus Christ. Have a good morning. See you tomorrow morning about 1030.